Hello, my name is Sol and welcome back to Skyrim VR Top 10. Wait, this isn't a top 10 video. L let me look at the script. Ah, that's right. Today isn't about mods. Today is about adjusting your game in any settings to make it look better as well as make the performance playable regardless of your specifications. Well, depending on your specification to be more precise. Now I want to clarify these any settings and suggestions all depend on your PC specifications. Some of these any settings can be altered with your particular headset. However, most of these will depend on your PC specs no matter what and nothing more. Before we begin, if this video helped you increase performance and visuals for your Skyrim VR or you simply enjoyed the input from this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more VR and comedic content. I also stream on Tuesday and Friday on three platforms, Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. Linktree is in the description. Also, if you'd like some more modding help from me or you just want to join my community, join the Soul Chamber, my Discord server. Now let's delve our noggins into your any files. First thing is first though, if you haven't already, download the Skyrim VR configuration tool from Belago, 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 I I don't know. Also know that this also works for Fallout 4 VR. Anyway, this will allow you to easily adjust your any settings for all the any files. Now, there are plenty of people in the Skyrim VR community from Reddit and Nexus who have made any guides and threads to help you adjust your any files. I personally pick and chose from several of these. I will post these guides and threads I use to create my current any settings. And these are always changing for me. Before we dive into the any portion of this video, there are two ways to download and use the configuration tool. You can download it with your mod manager, or you can do it manually, which is the more ideal approach. However, I did it the mod manager way, so I can have less clutter around my hard drives. If you manually downloaded the file, extract the contents to any folder you wish in any location, and the application will still get to your any files wherever it is located. If you download it via your mod manager, you can still find the exe file via the files. If you're using Vortex, you can right click the quote unquote mod under the mods tab and select open in file manager and run the exe there. Another way to easily access the configuration tool is by going to your dashboard on Vortex once again, select add tool, new, name it, and with the target, find the location of the configuration tool, which is in your Vortex mod directory and select it and click open. Lastly, hit save and it will be ready to go. Once that's done, to open it, just hit the play button next to the newly created tool shortcut you just did. However, for me, for some reason, it just doesn't work for me. Yep, it may be different for you. I tend to be okay with using the open and file manager method anyway. Now that we've discussed the downloading part of the configuration tool, now let's head into the any settings. Usually before I begin editing any any setting, I like to create a backup file. Basically, go to settings in the configuration tool where it says any location, select browse and make copies of the any files. After creating those copies, I go back and begin the carnage of messing around with the stuff, the difficult numbers and stuff, all the, all the code shiza. Sh sh First off, messing with the settings that are within the Skyrim V prefs any, which if you're using the tool, it won't matter. You won't know where it's at but you can do this manually. So I'm just telling you where it's at. And obviously to enable the use of mods, we want to search up B enable file selection and make sure it equals one. So we can use our mods in Skyrim VR. The settings in our Skyrim VR prefs any can affect performance, specifically draw distances and the adjustment of sizes if the user is wanting to increase visuals. This could mean stuff like particle sizes or flickering. It depends on your PC specifications. I want you to be aware of this. So if you're adjusting these, go according to your PC specs. There are some ways to combat some flickering. However, I'll mention that at the end of the video. What I'm going to tell you in terms of Skyrim prefs and the other any Skyrim any, I'm just going to tell you the stuff that I use and what they do. I'm also going to tell you the defaults and the community recommendations however these recommendations again can be detrimental to your Skyrim game 
It could affect your game negatively, or it could be good, or you could, your computer could handle it. These are all depending on your PC specifications. Please, please, please be aware of what you can do to your any, and it can practically crash your game all the time if you overestimate your computer. So just be aware. I'm going to tell you the defaults, and then I'm going to tell you the community recommended from a wide range of people. You can adjust these to be lower or light or more if you wish. Some of these won't have default numbers. Some of these will remain with the community recommended numbers. So I just want you to I just want you to know this because I don't want to be responsible for you if you somehow break your game and with the any, which that's why I said to make a backup of your any files because in case this does happen. Now, typically you would want to do this one by one. However, this is a lot to cover and I'm going to try to make it in parts as more performance heavy and double check, make sure this works kind of deal. And this is okay to do this no matter where you are and where you stand. So let's, let's do that. <laughs> Postal here. So I want you to put a disclaimer here that from this point forward, this video is going to be all about the any files and all about me saying the settings that I have. Uh, if you want to just skip it or just pause the video, I will leave my any settings on the video, or you can go to the discord where I will put them in the pinned comments of the modding help section. It's completely up to you, but if you do stick around to watch it all or listen to it for background noise or whatever, thank you. And please be sure to hit the like button. Now, for one, if we want to increase the multi-threading on our game, depending on our CPU, which some would have eight, some would have four, some will have 16, some 32. It all depends on your CPU. I num HW threads equals eight, if you have eight, and then you want to go that, go down from that list. Once you have eight, the rest can help you. I H W thread six can equal seven, five can equal six, four can equal five, three equals four, two equals three, one equals two. Those are all related to your CPU threads. This is not going to affect you negatively or harshly. Just make sure you know what your CPU count is, your, your, your threads. B use a threaded particle system equals one. B use threaded morpher equals one. B use threaded temp effects equals one. B use hard drive cache equals one. I don't exactly remember what that does, but I believe it takes a load off of your, your PC. Just, just a tad. B character lighting equals zero. Removes fake lighting on characters or immersion. <laughs> B shadows on grass equals one. That's what it says. <laughs> and you can set this to zero for a performance improvement. Otherwise, you can just leave it at one if you still want the immersion. B land specular equals zero, reduces shimmer. F near distance equals 13, gets rid of flickering on mountaintops. The default is five, I believe. So this you want to be wary of and try to just play with it a little bit. Make sure it doesn't overload your game, your computer. B do radial blur equals zero, disables a radial blur. F post load update time MS equals 1000. Basically gives your game more time to load scripts if your game is heavy of scripts like mine does. Mine is very heavy with scripts. Otherwise it would crash practically instantly. B VR map menu enable fog equals zero. Gets rid of the fog. F dialog menu scale equals 25. It, this will decrease the dialog UI. F activate rollover wand scale equals 10. This will shrink the interaction text when uh, you're pointing at something or looting something. F activate rollover wand Y equals zero. It just, this adjusts the position for the shrinked text and the same thing can be done for the X. F max time. Uh, this one is kind of weird. So if you use Higgs, you don't need to mess with this. You don't need to mess with this at all. However, if you want to, there is a table kind of deal. You can, again, all the threads that I've used are 
in the description. Some are from Kengar, some are from, I believe, Rally. Um, from this is all Scrum, the Scrum VR community in Reddit and Nexus. These will help you mold your game, your any. So, if you use Higgs VR, this one shouldn't bother you. You can leave F Max Time alone. However, if you want to use it, or if you, for whatever reason you feel like you need to use it to make sure, I guess, you can use these. For example, I have the index with a 90 FPS refresh rate. So, I would put it with 0 0.01111, or if I was with the 120 hertz of my index, I would put 0 0.01667 with motion smoothing, because I like motion smoothing, but it all depends on your headset. This is headset dependent. F global contrast boost. This will reduce your crushed quote unquote blacks. If you feel like the contrast is too much, you can change this to negative 0.1. F global map contrast boost. Again, will do the same thing as the other one. Now into the more meaty stuff of the Skyrim prefs. Um, we will start with the increased draw distances for trees. F tree load distance, which the default is 12,500 if I remember correctly, and the recommended from the community is 75,000. And to make lights more visible from a distance, we can do F light LOD start fade, which is the default is 3,500, and the recommended from the community is 50,000. Set grass fade to a maximum distance. F grass start fade distance equals 9,000, as well as F grass max start fade distance 9,000. F grass min start fade distance is set to zero. These are recommended. To increase the number of skinned trees around you, the player, as well as increase the distance from the player that the trees are skinned, uh, you can do the following. Again, performance costs. F mesh LOD level one fade tree distance, and I don't remember the default for this, but the custom, but the recommendation is 6,144. And the level two, basically change the one to a two, when you search this up, is 4,096. And these are based off of, or megabytes. Megabytes? I think it's megabytes in binary. F trees mid lot switch distance equals 8,192. Again, binary continuing with the trees ui max skinned trees to render equals 200 now to increase the maximum amount of particles uh, quote unquote desired to be rendered uh in the game which is like smoke uh sparks lighting and lead the leaves from the, the rift or snow these have a performance hit if you change this drastically. Uh, under the particle section, I max desired equals 1500. This is this is very high for a recommended uh, suggestion. However, I did half of that for me, and I, it seems to be fine for me. I don't have any more str struggling <laughs> bits in my game anymore in terms of the outside. To improve visuals by reducing pop-ins in the distance, um, again, though, this one can really hurt you. Uh, it can also mess up your game. U large REF LOD grid size equals 11. Default is five, and this can really, really impact your game. If you have over 200 mods like I do, I don't recommend touching this. Uh, unless, again, you have a beefy computer and a beefy CPU. I have an i7-8700. I don't have a K. It's not unlocked. I can't overclock it. But with my 200, almost 300 mods, I I cannot. I can't. I can, but I will not because I don't need it, in my honest opinion. And then we have more of the grass options. Um, again, performance costs. F grass start fade distance equals 2000. This is a recommendation. Uh, all the grass stuff is can be very taxing on your seep or on your computer. Uh, what you can do is download some stuff like Grass FPS Booster. Sometimes helps, 
or you can download if you want a grass mod you can download cathedral landscapes like i've covered in the past or you can just try to deal with whatever you set this to uh to increase the light distance from fires and torches it's f flickering light distance equals 8192 uh, default is 1024 again binary numbers to increase the light draw distance uh, we can set the F light LOD range to 25,000 and the default being 500. This didn't really have much Im impact on my game. To get smoother fade for grass uh, to notice less popping, uh, popping in, F grass fade range set this to 10,000. Basically, if you're using the recommendations I said earlier, that's what you would want to put. Uh, however, if you adjust this, set it to, mm, I think, 10% higher than your F grass fade distance. So if you can pull up a calculator or just search it up on Google, what's 10% of the blah, 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 put that number here. And now we'll get into some more smaller stuff, which will, which really won't affect you at all. S to scale down the HUD quest markers, F quest marker base scale distance and set this to 2.1. Or if you just get a, a clear HUD mod, you won't even have to worry about this. You you won't even see the quest markers that much, uh, except for when it's in your face. And to shrink the dialog UI, if it bugs you, F dialog menu scale equals 30. To move the dialog out of your vision, you can find F dialog menu rotate Z equals 70. It will slightly rotate the UI to the right, essentially giving you more visual as what it intends. Or you can just go to F dialog menu X and set this to 45, which the default is 35. If you just want to move it to the right, which I would do. To shrink the interaction text for the dominant hand, or if you're a righty or a lefty, uh, F activate rollover secondary scale and set this to 10. To shrink the text in your off hand, you can put F activate rollover primary scale and set this to 10. This next one is not really important if you use VRIK. If you use VRIK, you can skip over this one, as this one affects the scaling of the world, which VRIK does with its calibration spell. FVR scale equals 72. To make hands visible, even if your hands are sheathed, again, if you don't have VRIK, B always show hands equals 1. To set the hand scale, F magic hand scale equals 0.9. For a shorter draw length for the bow, you can put it to F draw length equals 25. The default is 40. For the arrow being held, so it's like not like poking out of your palm essentially, you can put F arrow hold rotation pitch, rotation pitch to 35. To adjust the magic casting angle, which is basically just where the spell comes out of the hand, F magic rotation pitch equals 50. For the crossbow being held angle, which is highly recommended, uh, F gun rotation equals 65. To make the magic come directly from your staff when you're using the staff, uh, F staff magic translate Y equals 50 and the X equals 7. To swing harder and to have a more realistic melee, uh, you can set this to F shield linear velocity threshold equals 4.5. And for the melee, you put F melee linear velocity threshold equals 6. Basically, you actually have to swing for the, the, the game to register you trying to hit something. To use your HMD directional movement, you can set B use wand directional movement to zero. To get rid of flashing weapons when you're blocking, basically the indicator that it's blocking, that you are blocking, uh, F VR weapon blocking indicator intensity equals zero for that increased immersion. Usually if you can tell when you're blocking if you walk slower when you're, when you would be blocking. This next one is optional if you encounter, you know, the press any button screen and you're just stuck there all the time. Uh, you can set V load VR playroom to zero. However, you won't be able to physically sneak if you like that feature. 
So what I would do is just try to see if it fixes it for temporarily and then go back to it and just go normally. To fix the smooth turn stutter, you can do B game pad, game pad, B game pad enable equals zero. To get rid of the pull towards character effect when you pick up an item, there is B immediately grab object on activate equals zero. To adjust the dual casting distance, basically when your hands are together, they cast the spell. If they are apart, they won't cast the spell. This depends on what you use, clearly. F dual cast min distance equals 20. Basically, it'll make you be able to cast two spells at once without having to spread your arms really far. As I said, it'll just make it to where you have to do like a Kamehameha blast with your hands physically to make it do a dual cast. And to continue with our Skyrim VR any stuff, there is many more to do. Uh, I'm gonna try to quickly cover through cover these. E play VR melee world impact sounds, set this to zero. Setting it to one will impact, will enable the impact sounds when you're even not in combat, which you don't want. An F activate pick length equals 100. This is the activation distance uh, to activate like a door or something. The default is two meters. Uh, you can, which is a, quite the distance to enable to activate doors and stuff. However, if you want a more immersive feel, you can set it to something like 30. However, if you use Frostfall and Campfire, you want to leave this alone because you need that distance to enable, to be able to set your camps and tents, which is a shame, but nonetheless, it's all right. It's not too game breaking or immersion breaking. F draw length equals 25, 30 is default. If you don't want your controller to hit your, your, your headset when you're drawing a bow, that's what fixes that. F arrow snap distance equals zero. This will basically stop the auto knocking when you're trying to use your bow. So you actually have to put the arrow by the string and press the trigger to be able to pull it back and get the ready, get the weapon ready to fire, which is very immersive. F arrow lerp distance equals zero. F left hand shield rotation roll equals negative 20. Basically making it easier to move and block at the same time. F melee cooldown multiplier equals 0.2 to be able to strike faster like you could with your actual hand if you wanted that basically there's no stupid cooldown to where you can swing so basically it sets it to how fast you can swing this can be immersion breaking if you're just swinging but that's what the previous velocity thresholds fix as well so you're not completely broken f Perk plane Z multiplier equals 0.13. This will adjust the perk trees so you don't have to do a, a, a Jojo pose when you're, or, a, or a Boa Hancock pose when you're looking at the skill trees. And the same can be done for Earth. F perk plane Y multiplier, set this to 0.1 and the X to 0.5. And set F perks scale to 1. Now that's all that I use. There are some more in my any files, uh, <laughs> but I will put my any settings in my Discord server under the pins in my modding help section if you want to know my stuff, my configurations. And I try to put my mod list from my Skyrim VRIP videos on there as well. I hope these settings helped you. This video is kind of longer than I expected because there's so much to cover. However, these can help you be more immersed into your game as well as have more performance to your game or, you know, or it can really impact your game depending on, again, your PC specifications. I cannot, I cannot express this enough. Your PC specs are so important. So please, please know your PC sec. Fuck, fuck. Please know your PC specs before you do any of this, please. Please. <laughs> Host Soul here. I just wanted to tell you uh, the few things that I forgot to mention that could help with the flickering. I mentioned it before in the Skyrim VR stunning video. Some things like Obsidian Mountain Fox could hide some of the flickering. 
or the flickering mesh fixings mod. So just look at those and see if they will help you with your flickering so you won't have to deal with much of the any. Well, that's it for this Skyrim VR video for your any settings. Now, stay tuned today when this releases, as there will be a small follow-up video for specific settings revolving around VRIK and Spellwheel VR and other mods to correlate an easy access VR feel for your Skyrim VR in the game. If there are mods for a specific category or role-playing type of character you want me to cover for your Skyrim VR, let me know in the comments and I'll get to them. It gives me ideas for these videos. Be sure to endorse the configuration tool and give your thanks to those any threads and guides. They really helped me and they pretty sure they will help you too. The link tree for my socials and streaming platforms are in the comments down below if you want to be up to date outside of YouTube. And don't forget to join the Discord to be up to date with my content or just to chat with me and my fellow compatriots. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like the video. Also, I have a Skyrim VR roleplay series which is posted every Sunday morning CST. It's about the hybrid named Wolfram. I think you'll enjoy it. If you're interested in other VR content as well as comedic moments, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notified of those future videos. And one last thing is to keep your soul free.